Hey, Greg's here. Today we will make our small little cube move. Open the player character scene. Here we want to change the type of our root node to be rigidbody 3D. Rigidbody is a node with full 3D physics implementation, meaning you will have gravity, force applied to it, and react to collisions. Now we need to define the physical shape of the object by adding collision shape 3D node. And we can set the shape to be a capsule. Good. Now we need to define the controls we will be using for our character. So open project settings. Find input map. And set up up, down, left and right input actions. Now we need to associate an action with some kind of input from the player by pressing this plus button. Let's make a classical VISD controls. Now we can assign a press of a button as input to trigger this action. Now let's create and add a new script to our root node called player input. And you will see that from now on we will be using a Visual Studio code. And if you don't know how to set it up, the video on how to do this is available in the Pokemon Go tutorial playlist or look it up on my channel. Let's set up our environment a little. We don't need an explorer over here. And we want to make our text a little larger. Let's create two variables, vector 3 velocity and exported variable flow for the speed of our character. Exported variables will be available to be edited in the editor. So you will be able to modify the speed of the character on the fly in the editor. Now we need to process the input by creating and calling the process input from the physics process. Physics process is called every physical frame. So it is a good idea to process a movement of physical object inside this callback. Every time we are processing the input, we will reset the velocity and recalculate it based on the player input by checking if is action pressed for forward, it is up. In that case, we will modify the velocity to move our character forward. Then we will do the same for down, meaning it is movement backwards onto the camera. And let's use left and right action to move our character on x-axis, you know, to the left, to the right. Then we want to normalize our input of velocity and multiply it by speed. We have calculated our velocity. Now we need to use this velocity to move the character. So inside the physics process, call a new method called move. And inside we will call move and collide, which will move our character based on the velocity, which we will pass as a parameter. Good. Now we need to create a floor for our character to walk on. So create static node on our main scene. Then add collision shape. Add the shape to be a cube. And move and scale it to be like a floor. Then make a mesh instance. Select the mesh to be a cube. It's the easiest one to shape to be like a floor. And we want to copy the shape of the floor by copying the size of the collider, which you can find in the sub node of the collision shape node. Now let's assign a material to our floor to make it of different color. So our character will contrast between floor and his model. Now 
Then let's build this project. And if you select the player character, because we have set our speed as exported value, it will show up over here and we can set the speed of the character. Let's try to launch and test our game. Good. Okay, it's too fast. Let's make it a little slower. But our camera doesn't follow the character. Because our camera solution is already partially implemented, we can simply attach it to the player character and camera will follow. But when we are moving, the movement doesn't take into account the rotation of the camera. So when you are looking like this, you're going all over the place instead of forward or backward or whatever. I don't like the color of the floor, so let's play around with the color a little. To read and use the camera state, we will need to reference the camera on our character. So create an exported variable for the camera. Good. Remember, for our fields to show up, we need to rebuild our game. And assign the reference in the editor. Now we need to get the vector of the camera, which is pointing forward or right. So we can calculate the relative direction for our character movement. We can get the right vector of the camera by getting the X rotation of the camera. It's a little more complicated. We will need to get both X and Z position from the basis of the camera rotation, which will project the forward vector of the camera, ignoring the Y rotation because it's up and down. Don't forget to normalize it. Now, instead of directly modifying the velocity, we will declare a new variable called input of type vector3. And now, when you process the input, use the vector forward for up and down input. The positive value of forward is forward and negative uh, will be backward movement. And for the left and right, you will be using the right vector, where negative right vector is to the left and positive right vector is to the right. And at the end, to get the velocity, we need to multiply the normalized input vector by the speed of the character. Good. As you can see, our cube move following the camera direction. Yes, our camera can fall through the floor. We will deal with this issue later in the tutorial. Thank you for support on Patreon, comment, subscribe, see you next time.